Thank you, FTPC combo. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture lesson for today is taken from James chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. James 18 to 25, I will read in time. พระเจ้าเนี่ยมาจากพระธรรมยาของพระที่หนึ่งข้อสิบแปดหรือยี่สิบห้าพระที่หนึ่งข้อสิบแปดข้อยี่สิบห้าถามว่าดังนี้โด
Now, whenever there's a celebrity, there's a reporter or a paparazzi, you know, that kind of follows. If any one of them wanted to write an expose about Jesus, it would be wise for them to approach James or other members of Jesus' family. And that's because family members of famous people would have an inside track on any dirt or flaws that the celebrity might have. James would have known Jesus up close and personal. Uh, the Bible does say that at first, James did deny Jesus. James and his brothers first did not believe in him. Now, imagine your own brother telling you that he is the savior of the world. Uh, you would probably deny him too. But the Bible also says that James eventually believed. Even if James knew Jesus up close and personal, he believed him to be the Son of God. And that, that is another reason we know that Jesus is for real. Jesus' own brother believed in him and became an important leader in his church even after Jesus died. That's because after Jesus resurrected from the dead, uh, in one of Paul's letters, 1 Corinthians, it says that he, Jesus, appeared first to James, and then he appeared to the rest of the apostles. So Jesus made this special appearance to his brother James after he resurrected to the dead, before appearing to the rest. And after that, James rose to prominence, and he became one of the key leaders. The Christian Church. So, just a little background on James. Uh, you know that he wrote this letter for all Christians. He wrote this letter for us. It is known as a very practical letter, meaning if you want specific guidance in the Christian life on how to live a Christian lifestyle of justice, integrity, or how to live with compassion towards others, how to cope with trials and troubles, you find all that in James and much more. Now at this point where our members, most of you should be very familiar with our scripture reading. Uh, we've done this, this is the third time we're doing this. This is part three of this message called Accept the Word Planted in You. Uh, we ended last week with a topic on how to change your life through the Word of God. We talked a little bit on how your life can be transformed and changed for the better as a believer in Jesus Christ. Now I know there are always people out there with their own little secret on how you can change your life by using whatever product they want to sell you. Uh, last night I googled the secret to change your life uh, and I got 60 million hits or results. Uh, you know, it's full of ideas, uh, products, and books. Uh, one website is selling a book that can tell you how to change your life and create long-lasting happiness. There's another website that sells 10 secret sauces that will change your life. Uh, it goes on to say how their sauce can make your food more succulent you know, and tastier. You know, it would make a Thai person say, Aroi Krap, something like that. But what we're talking about here is how the Word of God the Bible is able to transform you and change you into the likeness of Christ. And we find that James says that the secret to all that is that you ought to humbly accept the Word of God. That means you listen or hear the Word of God and then you do it. You put God's Word into practice. Now James 1.22 says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves and do what it says. Now, last week I also gave you a further sample of my skills in PowerPoint. I made some charts that you may remember from last week that talks about accepting the word of God. So here's one of them. Accept the word of God. It means listening to the word and doing what the word says. That's what it means to accept the word. Let's say we have a different situation. Listen to the word. The word says, don't gossip or forgive people. 
or don't steal and you say yes I believe that but you don't do what it says you continue to gossip you continue to not forgive people and hold grudges you continue to steal in some way or form what that means is you don't really accept the Word of God. Notice the X and accept the word, now it's an X. <laughs> so, all I'm saying is you may have read the Bible. You may have studied passages that tell you God's Word and God's commands. You may have continued to reflect on and think about it. And you may even sort of agree with it. But if you still do it, if you still gossip or not forgive others or steal, that means you don't accept the Word of God. And because of that, your life does not change. Your life will be not closer to being transformed into the image of Christ. Uh, and I think that's why for some people, Bible study or Sunday school, it, it, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Because people can attend these things and study the Bible year in and year out and even agree to what it says. But if they don't follow what is in it, it won't make a difference. Because you need to listen to the Word and also do the Word. For, it, for that means you need to accept the Word that's coming from God. And that's part of what it takes for God to make a change in you in a deep level. If you listen to the Word and do what it says. But we also talked about another situation. the difference there, right? Let's say you don't listen to the Word. It means you don't regularly study the Word. You don't read the Bible in your own time. You don't do Bible study with others. You don't go to Sunday school or have a small group. Um, but you try to do, you know, what it says. Meaning you try, to, you try to be good. You try to be moral. You just try to believe in God and be some kind of a nice person. And, and you know, there are people like that in churches. And so many statistics show how there are so many good number of people who claim to be Christians and own Bibles, uh, but they hardly open and read them. Um, in one Gallup poll survey, it says that more than half of Americans say that they read their Bible at least monthly. And yet they couldn't even name one of the four Gospels and fewer than half knew who actually delivered the Sermon on the Mount. The problem is for those who don't listen or read the Word, for those who don't take time to study, to reflect on it, to chew on it, to meditate on what it says, they also do not accept the Word. Because how would you know what God wants if you don't even read the Word? How would you know God's will if you don't reflect on it and pray over what it says in Scripture? How can you have a relationship with God without the Word of God challenging you, contradicting what you think and believe at times? That's part of what having a relationship with God is about. Because our God is living. Our God is active. God will not always say something that you will agree on. So it is important to listen to and read His Word. Reflect, think about its meaning and how it applies in your life. But let's say you don't want to read more of God's Word. You, you just don't have time. Um, instead, you try to wing it. You know, you just try to be good. You know, just do your best and God will do the rest kind of thing. Now, unfortunately, there's going to be a problem with that also. The problem is there's going to be a temptation to just do what you want to do. There will be a temptation to just believe what you want to believe. If the Word of God is not challenging or surprising you, if the Word of God is not taking a hold of you and your life, your life will not change. And that's because it's not much of a relationship with God. You mostly have a relationship with your own ideas of God. Christians are people who have a relationship with a God who is active and alive. God's words in the Bible surprises us. 
and leads us to places we will never go on our own will. Christians, let the scriptures search our hearts in order to change and transform us. The secret is humbly accepting the word by listening to it and doing what it says. Otherwise, you just deceive yourselves. You won't really know what God wants and expects from you. Now, moving forward, there's another good reason why it's important to hear and listen to God's Word even before you do anything. And that's where the last verses of our passage uh, come in. Uh, next verses. Uh, it says, Anyone who listens to the Word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have learned but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So the Bible is a mirror. Those who do not follow what God says looks into the mirror, the Bible, and then after looking, they look away and forget. But for those who look intently at the mirror, here they call the Bible the perfect law that gives freedom. If those who look closely at the Bible, meaning reflect on it, internalize, figure out how to apply, and does not forget it, but instead does what it says, they will be blessed. Now, I just want to make sure you know that the Bible being a mirror is an important point. That's because it is God's way to tell us who we are. Uh, if you read the Bible carefully from many different places, you will notice that before the Bible actually tells you what to do, normally it reminds you of who you are. The letters and other scriptures, they don't just say, do this or do that. If all you do is read the Bible and just look at the parts that tell you what you're supposed to do, um, it's, it's not going to help. It's not a simple book of rules that you just need to look up uh, and do by just trying hard or by trying to do God's commands based on our own willpower, which eventually breaks every time. The thing is, before the Bible tells you what to do, it actually reminds you first of who you are. For example, before the Bible announces to the people of Israel the Ten Commandments in Exodus, it first tells them how God saved them from slavery. In other words, God tells them first of how much He cares for them, how much He values them. Before Jesus proclaims to the crowd the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus first gives them the Beatitudes. He first declares blessings to those who are 